guys, I have a pretty crazy project going on today. We are out in the hills of West Virginia where this mobile home, anytime there is a major storm, the power goes out. It can be out for 10 days, even two weeks, and all of their food spoils in the refrigerator. They don't have any HVAC, anything like that. So in today's video, what I want to do is install a ProTran off-grid selector switch so that we don't backfeed any power back into the grid. We have some solar panels and we also have a massive portable power station. With all of that stuff, we hope to be able to give him a little bit of relief during those massive power outages, but we also want to make sure we're doing it the right way. And you might wonder, why am I standing next to the shed? This shed is going to house all of our electronics. It was purpose built. It is actually very unique. I'll show you guys in a second on the inside, but it's made out of pallets, siding, tin roof we're going to put our solar panels on top of it that way we don't truly have any additions to the building and guys the number one rule as always in all of my videos is safety if you are trying a project like this and you're not 100 confident in your ability don't do it hire an electrician so this is steve do you want to tell us a little bit about the problems that you have with the weather and the power outages here uh, we have power outages all the time the trees fall over the power lines then we're out without electric for 68 days and 90 degrees weather. Everything run in the refrigerator, the freezer. It was a catastrophe. The system that we have for today's installed is a Mango Power E. I did a review of the Mango Power E probably two or three years ago. Steve has had it. It has been his backup system ever since I did that review. We're going to install it probably either on the top shelf or a split between the bottom and top shelf here. Steve, how many solar panels we got today? One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's just do the four ones that are the same. Yeah. Okay. For this setup, we do want to use the similar solar panels because he's got several kind of random panels. For that Mango Power E, we want to make sure that the voltage is the correct voltage. And we're going to do, I think, a two series, two parallel setup. And so with the four panels, we're going to get very close to 1000 watts of input in that system. And actually, Booj RV sent these panels to me about a year ago for a testing review i used some of the panels for that video and in this video we're going to essentially use those panels for the rest of the setup so although this is not a sponsored video i do want to say thanks to bouge rv for providing the solar panels for today's project perfect Like down through here. Is that good? There you go. Okay. That way, make sure it don't go nowhere. It's like 90 degrees Fahrenheit today, and we move this thing outside. Together, these two, the, the main unit and the battery weigh 175 pounds. It has a 3,500 watt hour internal battery and about another 3,500 watt hour add-on battery. So combined total of almost 7,000 watt hours. This is a 30 amp outlet, so we are gonna be restricted to whatever we add up. This thing is almost three years old. It's been through several power outages and it is still running very strong. You want me to help you do that or? Uh, I should be able to get it. Oh man, yeah. Uh, this is the heaviest thing I've lifted in probably six months. Uh, all right. I'm curious if that second battery is going to fit on top of there. I'm not 100% convinced. Got 13 and a half inches. Perfect fit. Uh, if we can get it. <coughs> okay, Mario. Oh, that's a perfect fit. 
that in there good. Give yeah. ourselves some space. 175 pounds. If you've been watching the channel for a while, you know I recently had a surgery, so that thing was definitely a job for me. And the best part about this setup is there's plenty of space around the edges. That way we have airflow. Why don't you tell us a little bit about how you built your building? Well, I went to Royal King and got five big skids, oversized skids, put them together and insulated it, put the siding around it, and the roof is even a big skid, so. And they come out real good, and they're solid oak skids too, so. They ain't going nowhere for a while. The screws, they come from Timu. They're cheap screws, but they worked. I got my building put together with them. And of course, after wasting a half a dozen of them to get the other dozen, but <laughs> they, it worked. I got to get these panels unboxed. And I also double checked that input on the Mango Power E. It is rated from 60 to 150 volts. Most of my panels for my uses for camping are your 12 volt nominal panels. Those 12 volt panels are usually open circuit around 20. With this system, four 12 volt nominal panels. I'll put those in series. Hopefully that is enough to charge the Mango Power E. If that's not enough voltage, I don't like to mix and match, but we do have four of those flexible solar panels that I've tested on the channel as well. We can make another series configuration with those and between those two things we should have somewhere between 1600 and 2000 watts of solar panel capability and don't forget to subscribe to adventure gear tv <laughs> all jokes aside this panel is a no-go as this is this thing got broke somehow unfortunately in this configuration this is an absolute fire hazard so this one is a write-off we're not going to be able to use it it's essentially junk and now we're down to three panels so we may end up going into those folding panels anyway just to achieve the voltage that we need to power that mango power system in reality i do throw a lot of stuff but these panels i absolutely would not intentionally damage these because now this is a fire hazard as i said the glass is broken it's an open electric surface the corners are pretty broken up, and so I feel like potentially in shipping, and this is a problem I've dealt with in the past, carriers get excited, they, they carry all this heavy stuff to the Adventure Gear TV studio, and occasionally they will just drop stuff on the corner, things like that. Not that they're being spiteful, but they're moving 100 packages a day, and my 100 pound package is probably uh, something that they're not always looking forward to delivering every day. So this one's gone. Let's move on to panel number three and hopefully number four. And hopefully we have at least three operational panels. I really hope I didn't break those panels because kind of an expensive mistake. These are the Topcon N-type solar panels. They're meant to be elevated a little bit so that some of that, that reflective power actually increases the, the capability of the panels. The way we're gonna mount them is the more traditional close to the surface so we're not gonna get that full reflective capability. But even without that, these are rated at 200 watts. This panel is not broken, so we do have at least three good panels. Plenty to get us started. So we got a couple of issues. Luckily, we could find the solar panel input for the Mango. We're gonna hook this up. We're gonna just pre-arrange the solar panels. We don't have any mounting brackets. We don't have any hardware to mount the solar panels permanently. So we're gonna get everything essentially dry run set it up make sure we're at least getting some solar panel in or excuse me solar power into the device and then we can get some mounting brackets and then we'll move on to step two the mango power e takes up to 2000 watts of solar power at 60 to 150 volts so we're not in any danger at all in any configuration of over volting this system the only true danger that we have for this project, as I said earlier, is under vaulting. If I don't set those up correctly, with those three panels, I'm still a little nervous that I may not hit the 60 volt output. So just for now, we'll go ahead and set these panels up here. Get them kind of lined up. I'm gonna wire them in series and then I'll test the voltage as they sit right here. If I'm hitting at least 60, hopefully something higher than 60 then this system should work but i'm really nervous that 60 and these three panels together is just going to be just under that limit that i need it's almost a perfect fit with three of those well guys this is another example of i don't think this one's going to work both the leads are essentially broken out of this voltmeter this thing has basically junk i'm going to go ahead and just plug them in 
my hope here, what I usually like to check before I do this, is I like to make sure that these are wired correctly at the factory. They almost always are in my entire time playing with solar panels. I really have not had any problems with incorrect wiring, but it's something that's always in the back of my mind. Next step we're gonna do is make a MC4 connector. In this case, my negative side has a, a female side. This is actually in fact a male side. I'm gonna put this male side on my cable. I've already got one almost ready. Number one, I wanna make sure this grommet is here and then this piece is ready to screw on. So what I like to do is just kinda of get some pre-tension on this, put this through the hole. Doesn't have to be a lot of wire exposed. I probably got about a quarter inch of exposed wire. Ratchet that down, that piece is good to go. When I screw this in, if I need a little more torque, I do have this little tool right here. Boom. And since we don't have a voltmeter, this is the moment of truth. I've got everything hooked up, all three of those panels in series. Now I'm gonna plug this into the mango. Two things will happen. Either I will let the smoke out, which only comes out once, or the display will light up indicating that we're getting some kind of charge from the solar panels. And I guess we have a third option, which is that we just don't have enough voltage to even activate the mango. And option number four is of course that the mango is 100% topped off. It is showing that the grid or the solar panels are hooked up, but I'm not getting any power in because it's already topped off. And so what I need to do is draw down the mango just a little bit and see what kind of solar power I'm getting in. So we managed to get a voltmeter that works. Now this is for three nominal 12 volt solar panels in series, 75.7 volts, which is perfect. And we're pulling in about 10 amps, 75 volts and 10 amps. That's actually a little better than I thought. So the sun is out right now. We have had some cloud coverage right now. I think we're going to get our max power. Immediately registered that we're on solar power and we're hitting very close to that nominal 600. I've actually seen this go up to 680 Watts off those 600 Watts of panels. Very satisfied with that result. This would be quite a bit of solar power for kind of an amateur setup. In today's video, we're not gonna be able to install this box right here. Steve, you picked this up at like a yard sale or something? Yard sale. Somebody had it, they probably started the project. They never finished it, just like we didn't today. But what we're missing is we want a generator style, like a TT30R output that will go from the mango power and plug directly into this. For me, the safest bet, I'm not a certified electrician. I don't wanna be messing with someone's house, messing things up. We're gonna go ahead and put this back in the box. We're gonna get the right outlet. We'll get this thing installed probably in the next few months. We've got the three panels. We've got the wires so that negative and that positive run around into the little building here. We have a door that will eventually get a set of hinges. All of this stuff is absolutely homemade. I feel like if we had plenty of time, we weren't rushing for a YouTube video. <laughs> We would be able to do that, but right now I'm not ready to get into that project. If you like the video, please consider subscribing. Give me a thumbs up and I'll catch you in my next adventure.